welcome back and finally in this part of the course we're going to start creating our first screen for our prototype okay uh, so here is my final screen that i ended up creating and we're going to be recreating each of uh, these screens or artboards to be more precise and we're going to start off with the login screen over here so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to keep this as a reference in case i want to have a look so let me come back to my original project and I'm going to go and double click on this and I'm going to call this login screen. Okay. Now the first thing we want to do is a background. Now there are two websites which provide high quality, super high resolution, royalty free images. And I'm going to show you those now. So the first one is pixels and uh, these are amazing and they have such a large variety of uh, images and which you can download just for free and you don't have to pay a buck and you don't even have to give credit for some of them and which is really interesting you can also upload them if you want and the second one is called unsplash.com and these are again very high quality very unique and different type of images now if you want something particular um i can just go and type in tech and and that's gonna open up a variety of tech related photos and i can just pick any one i want and uh, download them so i'm going to pick one of this and i'm going to download it and i'll put a link to that picture in the description so if you guys want to use the same picture feel free to do that so now that i'm back in adobe xd i can go to file and click on import and i can go and go to my download section where i have the picture and just click on import and that's going to go ahead and import it now another way to import it is you can drag it from your desktop and just place it over here and that's going to open up for us now if I hold on Alt and uh, move my mouse scroll wheel, I can zoom out and zoom front. Now the other shortcut is Z. If you hold on Z, you can click to zoom in closer. If you hold on Alt when you're in the zoom tool, which is over here by the way, you can just zoom out. Now I think Alt and moving the mouse scroll wheel. Now um, with the selected, I'm going to go to the selection tool by pressing V on my keyboard and I'm going to shrink this down pretty much. So if I hold on Shift, it's going to uh, proportionally shrink it down so i'm going to move this right over here and as you can see we end up getting these you know these blue color lines which are like guides which adobe xd try to understand where you're trying to place a photo and what you're trying to do i'm going to do the same thing over here so hold down shift and bring this closer and there we go now if i click away it automatically crops everything and just places whatever is visible in the artboard which is extremely handy for me which you know it's a big uh, it's a very cool concept by the way Okay, now whenever I hover my mouse, I can see these blue color lines and it, I, I, and by mistake, I might end up, you know, moving them around, which is um, something, you know, uh, is going to be a very big pain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and choose lock and that's going to lock it up for me. So I don't end up moving this automatically or by mistake. And uh, another, another thing is if you come here to the layers panel, which is control Y for the shortcut, it opens up this layer panel. And as you can see, we have ourselves the object over here. If I click on this, you can see it's all, and I can also rename this. So let me just rename this to background image, right? There we go. And I can also click on this I button, which is going to hide it and make it visible, which is pretty handy. So let me press control Y to get rid of that control zero to fit the entire document to the screen. Now, um, we want to blur this image because we don't want it to be a very flat image. So if I go back over here to my original, you can see it's blurred out a lot. So let's blur that out. How do we do that? We go to the glue is we have to select the image, but since we locked it, we can unlock it by clicking on this button or right click and choose uh, unlock. And uh, let's click on object blur. And that's going to blur out the object. Now, what is background blur? I'm going to show you that right now. So if I go increase up the blur amount, you can see it blurs out completely. And uh, you know, you can add how much ever blur you want. That's completely up to you. And you know, it's it's your call. And I can also move this over to the side. So I'm gonna move it to somewhere over here, right? Something like that. And uh, I can right click and choose lock. Great, so now I can move this and I can also, I can't change the blur amount as well. Now, let me unlock this and show you what background blur does. Now, for example, if I set the blur amount to zero, let's create a new rectangle here by using the rectangle tool. And I just create a rectangle like so. And on the rectangle, if I click on background blur, you can see that whatever is behind this rectangle, 
gets blurred. And that's the difference between object blur and background blur. In object blur, the object is getting blurred and in background blur, the object isn't getting blurred, but the image behind the object is getting blurred. So that's the difference between object blur. And I can change this over here. So if I see, if I set the blur amount to zero and the brightness to zero, so the opacity to 100 or to zero as well, you can see it's just a rectangle, you know, and I'm sorry, I need to set the brightness to zero and you can see there's no change in the brightness. It's the exact same. And once I go ahead and start increasing the amount of the blur, uh, I can end up blurring the part behind and that's going to help me to blur certain sections. So I'm going to delete this and we're going to go and set the object blur to say something uh, like 25 and uh, I'm going to go press control L to lock it and we're good to go. So the next thing is we're going to go and uh, create this rectangle that we have over here. So I'm going to go and choose the rectangle tool, come over here to the corner and just drag in ourselves a nice simple rectangle like so looking good. Now I don't want the border which is basically the stroke so I'm going to uncheck that and I'm going to come to the fill and make sure it's set to white. Great. Now I'm going to go and reduce down the opacity of this a little bit. So we get something that looks like this. So probably I'm going to set the opacity of this to let's say uh, 30. Okay. Now if I change this to a black color let's see if we get a better look. Yeah I think black looks better. Uh, it gives more contrast to, to the project. Okay, what else we want? So we can start off by creating this small rectangle that we have and uh, also start off with the text. So I'm going to go and start off with this rectangle right here. Okay, so to create this, we're going to go create a new rectangle. And I'm just going to click over here and drag out so it fits to the other side. Now, as you can see, I can individually change my height. So I probably, if I, from eight, I can set this to five and that's gonna make this even more smaller. Let me just hold on Alt and zoom in. And by pressing V on the keyboard, I can use the selection tool and I can just drag this down like so. Now, as you can see, it has a border, which I don't want. So I'm gonna uncheck that. I just want a flat line and I'm gonna go and probably change the color of this to red. Now, if I want, I can go and copy the same color as my original project. So let me just do that. So I'm gonna select this. And if I come over here, I can copy this hex code by pressing Ctrl C and I can go back to my original project and press Ctrl V and press enter and that's going to add that. Now I want to remember this number so what I'm going to do is uh, let me just get rid of these. I can just click on this plus button and that's going to add in this color swatch. So every time I want to add the same color I can choose an object and just click on this color and it's automatically going to apply it. Now this is fine. Now I want the length of this to be half the length of the original one. So if I select this and the width is set to 360, if I divide that by two, that's going to be 180. So if I just click on this and press 180, that's going to uh, reduce that to exact half the length. And if I press control zero, this is what we kind of get. So now the next thing is let's go and create this, this rectangular box over here. Uh, and we're going to add a nice gradient to it. So let's select the rectangle tool. And let's just draw a rectangle somewhere over here. Okay, now uh, I want this to be in the dead center of the document. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and click on this button which says align center horizontally. And that's going to center it right in the vertical center of the document. And I can just hold down shift and move this down and place it somewhere over here. Now I don't want to bother so I'm going to get rid of that. And let's click on the fill and let's go to gradient and add in a gradient color. So what I'm going to do is if I select this stop over here, so these endpoints are called the stops. And if I click on this, I can just click on this button and that's going to apply the same color. Now if I select this stop, which is the one at the bottom, and I can click on this and let's make this a little bit more darker. You can see now we have a nice beautiful gradient over here. And I can also change the brightness of this. So I can make this to a transparent or I can make this 100% opaque and I can just click away. And as you can see, we have this very nice looking gradient. Now if I come over here to the layers panel and if I select this, we see we have a lot of these, uh, you know, rectangles that we created. It's very important to name them so we don't lose track of what is what. So this rectangle, as you can see, is the top part. So I'm going to call it top rectangle. Okay. And this one is going to be the uh, middle rectangle. So I'm just going to call this middle rectangle. And uh, this is going to be the continue box. I'm just going to name this box. Okay. 
Now, now as you can see, uh, this is pretty, you know, bright for me. So I'm gonna add a little bit of darkness. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here to the rectangle tool and just create a nice rectangle on top of everything. Make sure I don't have any border and the fill, I'm gonna set that to black. Great. Now, I'm gonna call this uh, shadow. Now what I'm gonna do is I can actually move the shadow layer in between these layers that we have. And if I place this on top of the background image, I can see all the other elements except the background image because the shadow is on top of the background image. Now to make it dark, I'm just gonna go and reduce down the opacity of this. So now it becomes a little dark. So I think if I set this to 65%, we get a very nice looking contrast over here. And I can just press Ctrl Y to close the layers panel which is really nice. Now, uh, we're gonna go and create these two lines over here by using the line tool. So I'm gonna click on this line and uh, just probably come over here, hold down shift, and then just create a line on the other side. And let's just zoom in a little bit more. And uh, you can increase the border. So I'm gonna probably increase the border of this to say 1.2 uh, or probably let's say 1.5. That's, that's fair enough. And let's make a copy by holding down alt and shift and then just bringing it down like so. Yeah, there we go. Looks very nice. Now I'm gonna select these two, change the color of this to white and reduce down the opacity a little bit. Uh, let's actually reduce it down to probably let's say 10%. Now, as you can see, you can either type in the number or you can click on the number and scroll up and down. So I'm gonna set this to 10 right here. Perfect. So now comes the fun part, that is to add the text. So let's click on the text tool over here and I'm just gonna go and click. And what are we gonna type? We're gonna type in sign in, sign up, username, password, continue and forgot password. So I'm gonna start off with sign in. So I'm just gonna type in sign in. And uh, once we do that, we get a lot of options over here to customize. The first thing is I'm gonna go and set the fill to white and I'm gonna place this right over here. Now to make sure that this is in the exact center of the width of the rectangle, I can hold down shift, select this one, and if I come over here and just click on align center, it automatically aligns it. So let me just show you, if I move this over to the side, and I can select these two and click on this, you can see it moves the sign in object right in the center of this, which is pretty handy to align things. Now obviously I don't like this font, so I'm gonna go out and change the font. Um, so I'm gonna pro probably with uh, just a random font, I'm not sure what, I'm gonna go with Typograph Pro. Now I can also choose the various uh, fonts I have of the typeface. So if I choose semi-bold, it's gonna give me a semi-bold font. And I can select these two again and click on this to center it. I can also change the paragraph to center over here. So next time when I, probably try to increase the font size, it's gonna scale it from the center and I don't have to align it again and again. So 20 is uh, pretty too much. So I'm gonna set this to 15 and uh, move this a little bit down and that's looking better. Now let's make a copy of this by pressing Control C and Control V and that's gonna place it right on top of it. And I'm gonna go select it, hold down Shift and move this over to the right side and uh, place it somewhere over here. Now if I want to place it exactly in the center of uh, this part, I can just select this rectangle, move this over to this side, then I can select these two and click on align center and I can select this and move this back by holding down shift so that it snaps. So that's a neat trick for aligning stuff. The next one is the username, so I'm gonna copy this, uh, control C, control V and hold down shift and just bring it down. And this is gonna be pretty small, so let's set this to around 10. And I'm gonna go and double click on the text and I'm gonna call this um, username, okay? And move this a little bit to the side so we can add in our icon. And uh, I can hold on alt and hold down shift to drag this down as well. And I can place this over here and I can call this password, great. We can also come over here and add in the continue button. So let's select the sign in, hold on alt, and we can place this right over here. So as you can see, we get this plus sign, which is gonna place it perfectly for us. And I can just call this uh, continue, brilliant. And let's make a copy of this again by holding on alt and dragging this down. And this is gonna be forgot password, pcaps. 
Now maybe this is too big, so I'm gonna reduce the size of this also down to 10, and uh, the size of this also down to probably 12, not 10. And you can select these two by holding down Shift, and we can just drag these down, uh, you know, to get, get something like this. Now the rectangle is pretty big, so I'm just gonna go and select this anchor point, Hold on Alt so it scales the top anchor point as well and we get something that looks like this. Press Ctrl 0 to fit and it's looking pretty cool and interesting right now. Now you can add the logo of your app but I'm just going to go take my logo over here. Just copy that by pressing Ctrl C and come over here and press Ctrl V and as you can see I get this cool looking pop outs which uh, tell me what I can do to make my workflow faster. Now it says to use a repeat grid to come to quickly duplicate elements in multiple times which is not useful in this case but we're going to take care of that later now the last thing is to create the icons over here which is the uh the home icon and the lock the profile icon and the lock icon which we're going to do in the next part but when we're creating the other icons we're just going to go and copy the same icons or probably take them from one of the ui kits over here to reduce the time but in the next video i'm going to show you how to create these icons from scratch in xd so thank you guys so much for watching till here and i'll see you guys in the next part